and many scientists like me have tried to tell the world, though even their best-selling science books don't grab the headlines like novels. This collection belongs to my friend Douglas Adams, creator of The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Douglas was an English graduate, but these days it's not great novels he turns to first. I think I read much more science uh, than novels. I think the, you know, the role of the, the novel has changed a little bit. You know, in the 19th century, the novel was where you went to to get your sort of serious uh, reflections and questionings about, about life. You go to Tolstoy and Dostoevsky. Uh, nowadays, of course, uh, you know, the, the scientists actually tell us much, much more about uh, such issues um, than you'd ever get from novelists. So I think, uh, you know, I, I, uh, for, the, for the, the real sort of solid red meat of what I read, I'll go to go to science books and, uh, you know, read sort of novels as light relief. So let me ask you, what is it about science that really gets your blood running? The world is, is a thing of, of utter, inordinate complexity and richness and strangeness um, that is absolutely awesome. I mean, the idea that such complexity can arise not only out of such simplicity, but probably absolutely out of nothing, is the most fabulous, extraordinary idea. And once you get some kind of inkling of how that might have happened, it's, it, it, it's just... It's just wonderful. Um, and I feel that, uh, you know, the opportunity to spend um, 70 or 80 years of your life uh, in such a universe is time well spent, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> I quite agree, which brings me back to my passion, evolution. I never stop being amazed by the immense age of our world and what it means. I've tried to pass this on to others. Today, I'm visiting pupils at an Oxford school. I hope they, and you, share my enthusiasm. Right, does everybody know what evolution is, very roughly? Have you ever heard of it? Yeah? yeah? It's, it's why we're all here. It's where we come from. Because way, 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 way back, we all started as bacteria. And then as the generations went by, we got bigger and bigger, and cleverer and cleverer, and we went through all sorts of stages gradually until now we're like we are now. So first we want somebody to be themselves today. Who would like to be themselves today? Okay, would you like to stand here? Now I'm going to make one meter equal one millennium. So one millennium back, that's one meter. Do you know who we get back to? They're about William the Conqueror. So would, would you like to be William the Conqueror? Okay. Okay, now who wants to be Jesus Christ? I think, let's have a girl for Jesus Christ, shall we? What about you? So you stand another millennium back. And so on, until all 5,000 years of recorded history, back to the earliest Babylonian civilization, were represented by six children a meter apart. But we needed to go back further into evolutionary history. First stop, Homo habilis, two million years ago. Where's he got to stand? This, 2,000 metres away. That'll take you sort of roughly at the top of Headington Hill. OK, off you go. <laughs> Ramapathicus lived 14 million years ago. And as we delved further and further back in time, so our scale became more and more ludicrous, and the children were having to disappear to the four corners of the country. Oligochyphus. Ipswich. To save on the rail fares, I tried another tack to get the message across. So what I want you to do is to hold out your one hand, it doesn't matter which, let's say your right hand. All right? And the distance from your middle to the tip of your finger represents all the time since life began. That's 4,000 million years. Can anybody guess roughly where, say, the dinosaurs were on this scale? Yes. On the wrist? Yeah, that's not bad. It's surprisingly recent. And all of historical time, that's Jesus and King David and the pyramids and ancient Babylon, the ancient Egyptians, all that time, everything you've ever learned about in history, where do you think that would come? This far away from your tip of your finger no, or something like that. It's much, no, no, it's much further than that. 
Why do you think I handed out those nail files? You get your nail file and get your middle finger and just do one stroke of the nail file and look at the dust that falls from your nail. And you might see a few grains of dust that fall from the tip of your nail. And the whole of human history has fallen in the dust from one stroke of the nail file. I thought it was really interesting. Um, it's sort of not really like some talks I've been to, it's just really boring. It was really fun, but it gave us a lot of information as well. I didn't actually realise that my relatives were bacteria. If you just take a nail file and do that, and that's how long the, the human race has been alive, I was really surprised about that. I thought the human race had been alive for since the beginning of things have been alive. Like most scientists, I'm a realist, but I'm also a bit of a romantic. It's something I share with my wife, Lala Ward, who now illustrates my books. I appreciate that there are people who think they need something more than science can offer, something frankly undefinable. But I think science does offer all we need, not just to understand the how of life with its great richness and complexity, For me, science goes as far as we meaningfully can go towards answering the why as well.